Hi and welcome to our 23rd episode and I'm in conversation with the Dean and Director of Six Cricket Academy, Mr. Karthik Jashwan. Welcome, sir. Thank you. As always, we've been thankful to all the parents and our viewers for their wonderful support in all episodes. In today's episode, our first question is, what is the right age to gauge a child's potential for competitive cricket and how do we gauge it? Uh, the second one is a little easy to answer because how do we gauge it, you know, in cricket there is performance related, uh, uh, you know, appraisal. Uh, unlike other sports like say football, only it is the forwards who how many scores, how many goals they score. Whereas in cricket, how many runs you score, how many wickets you take, it's all recorded. So that is one way to gauge. Now at what age, it's a difficult question because some people, uh, you know, get better later. So each individual, uh, uh, see this uh, sport, any sport for that matter, is a connect of physical and psychological things. Uh, the aspects of uh, both physical and psychological when it connects. So now for some kids, they get it right early. They are physically strong and mentally well prepared. They know how to handle pressure and uh, plus so many things also associated with the mental and the psychological aspects of the game. So, but for some, it may take a little more time. So it is patience is very, very important. Moving on to the second question is, some kids who are super performers in under 12, 14, 16 category seem to struggle to perform as they go higher level. Why? Yes, this is a very a question which is very true. It, it is a fact. Like I just told that, uh, you know, some kids who are performing at the early age of 12 or less than that, could be having that physical strength or that being a little slightly smarter than the other kids so they they do perform well but like the question itself says when they go go on from 16 to 19 see everybody have that psychological advantage or the physical advantage at that time so what happens at that time is the pyramid which is very broad at the bottom starts narrowing so initially at 12, 14 and all these age groups, somebody who is stronger or somebody who is smarter will obviously perform. A little later, everything will connect with the other athletes too and then it will be a level playing field. At that time, these kids who are performers previously uh, will find it difficult or may find it difficult, but that is where it is very, very important for the parent to be with the athlete. To understand that the competition is getting better uh, and the people who quickly realize that you know cricket or any sport is not my cup of tea it could be something else they branch off so it is only the better and b b better players remain in the sport so finally at the top it is only the best remain so that, that that's how that is one of the major reasons uh, why I always say is that uh, starting the sport very early has got its disadvantage. See here, you start early at the age of 12 if, if the athlete is performing and uh, you started at say at 6, 7 and there's so much of effort from the parent itself. You know, now uh, travel to any academy or any sports uh, facility, it's a lengthy drive and the parent has to do it every day in out. In, out. The parent also will start losing uh, patience. So in that time, what happens suddenly, you know, the performance of the athlete is dropping a bit. So they just take the foot off. That's not a good sign. Ideally, you know, the, the, if you want to really see the potential of the athlete, it is, I think you should be in the sport at least till about 19 or 20, 21, you know, like that. That is when, you know, the real, uh, real, you know, connect between the body and the mind happens only after about 16, 17. As they mature up. Yes, yes, both physically and uh, mentally. So by the time, you know, I start very early and then I pull off the child very, uh, you know, so there could be a big talent loss, which is not only uh, bad for the, uh, the player itself, but it could be bad for the sport and for the country also, because he can probably go on to uh, represent the country and maybe a star in the future, but then the parent has lost patience. So they can withdraw the child from the sport. Thank you. Moving on to the third question, I think you can answer this since you were a left arm spinner. At the young age, under 16, there is a belief among players that spin bowlers are prone to take more wickets than pace bowlers. Is it a myth or a truth? No, it is, it is a fact. See, what happens is like, uh, you know, at the younger age, the boys do not have strength. 
So what happens even if a slightly tossed up ball, uh, especially from a left hand spinner like me or a leg spinner, when they when they bowl, the younger kids try to hit them out. So when they hit them out, what happens is either they miss it, they're bowled or caught it's uh, uh, caught it cover or caught in bowled, or they certainly not clear the boundary. So they are out. So the chances of getting wickets as a spinner who leaves the batsman has got more chances versus a spinner who gets the ball in. So if the batsman misses also, the ball may not, may hit the pad. So the chances between a, a spinner who takes the ball away from the spinner who takes the ball into the batsman, the guy who takes the ball away has got more chances. That is one amongst the spinners. Now coming to fast bowlers, see the fa faster bowlers who are good, especially I've seen from, uh, you know, from many years I've been seeing the guys who have done very well, the guys who have done very well in uh, uh, as uh, fast bowlers have not really performed uh, at the junior level because these guys if, to play at the best level you need to have that bounce so when you have the bounce what happens is even uh, the ball will clear the stump so it will not be bowled or if he edges through his side uh, lateral movement there is no one at that age to catch the ball because the ball comes so quickly of the uh, edge of the bat. So these are the two reasons that the spinners perform better, which which should not be a yardstick for the parent to say that you know my my son or daughter was performing so well at a younger age, but now the performance is dropping. The pace pace bowlers are taking up. So that that is one one thing. Then I want to tell the parents of the pace uh, faster bowlers also, whom I met many in the at the grassroots level that uh, they keep coming to me and asking me that sir you keep saying that you know he's a very good bowler my son is a good bowler but hardly i don't see any performance so th this is the reason you know but later on yes they do they go on and to they pick up yeah they pick certain, up and they certain. start performing moving on to the th fourth question based on your experience how do we help kids deal with emotions of not making it to clubs as parents we encourage them and motivate them to keep trying beyond a certain point and what happens after that when emotions hit uh, i really don't know uh, you know this being the last question i really don't know whether i've really got the question right but uh, see that itself is learning at a very young age see this is a harsh world you know we got to the the realistic world is you know you got to be tough so by not being picked for a academy team or for a club team, that itself teaches so many things. See, this is the reason why you need to play the sport. For you to understand that, you know, you're not welcomed everywhere. If you deserve, you're there. So that is the way of life, isn't it? Uh, so that learning is the takeaway for me rather than how do we motivate him or, uh, or anything. See, simple thing, if he's good, if he has missed the selection this year, he will make it next year. Otherwise, he was never good. As, as simple as that. So my advice is, you know, look at sport as a holistic way of development of human values, which your child will uh, get from this sport, rather than, you know, starting the sport to get into representations, uh, you know, thinking of uh, representing the country, state, IPL and all that. That is not the way to take it forward. You start the game, for the right things which the sport teaches and then if if the child is good the athlete is good he or she will make it i think that's the right way to take it forward thank you so much and also stay tuned for our next episode on the first of every month do like share and subscribe to our youtube page thank you thank you very much again i'd like to thank the parents because uh, it's getting more and more involved because the idea of this uh, show is to i know that there are a lot of uh, parents across the world want their uh, children to take up to sport and they really don't know the pathway or why the sport has to be played or how the parent has to look after the child see because the emotions are involved time is involved so it is very important for the parents also to know as to how to deal with a sports child so it's a lot different than a normal you know normal student so so that is the reason for this so keep sending more and more questions like this we'll be very happy to answer you thank you thank you